Okay, trying out a little bit of a different recording setup today because uh, normally I shoot with one of my big cameras, but today I'm just going to try out using my phone for the hell of it, uh, with a mic at least, so hopefully the audio is good. I'm not using my lav mic, I'm using a shotgun mic because it was easier to set up. Today I am going to be upgrading, or well, building a new Plex server. Uh, if you've watched one of my old videos, uh, you've probably seen my old NAS. That machine is a dual 12 core, 24 thread Xeon system, so 48 threads total, and uh, it's getting real old. I'd like to switch it out with a more efficient system, potentially without the P2000. I don't know uh, if uh, it turns out the performance isn't as good in this setup. I might switch back to the, the P2000 and just put it into this machine, which I'm perfectly okay with. I'd just like to avoid the extra electricity, if possible, since, you know, it's on 24-7. It adds up, even though it's just 30, 40 watts for a GPU, it adds up over time. This is definitely not a budget build. You can definitely save money in a few ways, and I'll go over them when I, when I go through it. I'm going to be building uh, in this 4U chassis, which is from Rosewill. It's the RSV 4000U. I like Rosewill's cases, uh, their server cases, for the most part. I mean, they have some issues. They're um, a little sharp in places, but uh, yeah, they're pretty good for the price. Uh, you really can't complain much about them. Uh, I have a couple of the 4500Us, which are hard drive oriented. They're also a bit longer. I could have just gotten another one of those, but this one's a little bit shorter. It's very similar in design. It's just you lose a bit of length and a, and a fan wall. So this only has fans at the front as opposed to uh, another row of fans. I'll show more when we get in there. So I'm going to be building it around the i7-12700K. You can definitely save money here by going down in, in scope. Like you can, hell, you can run it off an i3 if you want, uh, if you're not doing many users. This particular one was just like, without going crazy in price, it was really powerful. I also want to try out having something above the 12400. I have a 12400 in another system. Apparently the 12500 and up have dual graphics engines. Well, um, transcoding engines. And one transcoding engine is already pretty good in these uh, iGPUs. So I'm curious to see what kind of performance one of these can pull off because they are quite good. iGPUs with QuickSync often don't meet the same level as the P2000s, but you're getting it free with the processor, basically. This, the, the 12700K has four efficiency cores and eight performance cores, which are hyper-threaded. So it comes out to 20 threads. You're kind of stuck using Windows 11. I don't know if Linux is fully supported for the uh, the two different types of cores. I don't know if um, it's called Thread Director. It's built into Windows 11 and not 10. And that allows it to shuffle tasks to the efficient cores as opposed to the performance cores. Uh, you know, like Windows Update, that kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, I'm going to try that out. I have a 12400K, like I mentioned, in a, or 12400 in another system. And uh, yeah, the 12th gen is pretty good. I mean, I do like AMD. I'm going to be replacing the whole Xeon system with two systems, but they're both going to be more efficient. And the other one's actually uh, uh, AMD Ryzen. So, you know, I'm not playing favorites. I don't really care who's on top. I just want good products so I want them both to be good that way they compete the uh, motherboard I'm going with is the Z690 from ASRock the Phantom Gaming 4 slash D5 uh, that means it uses DDR5 you do not need to get DDR5 <laughs> I just have never had anything with DDR5 so I thought what the hell I'd try it out it's a pretty basic board it's like $160 or something like that I wouldn't recommend it for like crazy over the top overclocked builds but you know this is uh, not going to be overclocked despite being a K processor. I mean, I might in the future, but I doubt it. The main benefits of this is that I wanted to try out the DDR5. It has quite a few slots. It's got three PCI 1X slots that can actually hold larger slots or cards. They have um, cutouts. There's a PCIe 5.0 slot, which is completely useless at time of filming. And uh, that's 16X. And then there's this PCIe 4.0 16X slot, which is not true. It's a physical 16x slot, but it's only electrically four. Uh, that seems to be a mistake on the packaging because uh, internally in the manual, I think it does state the correct thing. But yeah, you'd be kind of disappointed if you found that out after a purchase. I do really like ASRock boards. They, uh, they've they worked out well for me in the past. And I really like their BIOS update because it uses an internet connection. You can just 
go into the BIOS and hit update and it will connect to the internet and download and install. It also has a BIOS flashback button, which is really good if uh, they in general let you um, flash BIOS without a processor installed. If you run into a situation where your CPU is out of date or you buy a new one that isn't supported by the BIOS, you can you can flash it without having to get an old one. DDR5, you know, all sorts of USB connections and stuff that I don't need. I have to say the DDR5 memory slots on this board are really nice it's very satisfying to to click in the ram on this really nice uh high quality slots they're metal and they're they have to be surface mount now to account for the signal timings and stuff for ram i just went with a uh, kingston fury uh this is 5200 ddr5 uh interesting thing about ddr5 is that it has internal ecc to a point you know like it's kind of like mentioned on sites that oh ddr5 comes with ecc for free essentially and it kind of does the internal chips actually do air correcting and will correct errors from the chip but there's no ecc between the ram and the motherboard or the processor so errors can occur in transit and uh the ecc from what i can tell is really just there because the density has gone up so high in these that you can, I think they're, they're you know, it's possible to get like a one terabyte stick now or, or half a terabyte in on one stick. And they just need internal air correcting because there's just so much memory. <laughs> so I think that's why they, it's not out of making things nicer for the consumer. It's really just because the memory <laughs> is gotten so dense that it needs air correcting like a, like a solid state drive almost. I'm trying out this TP-Link TX401. 10 gigabit network adapter. Uh, I've never used the TP-Link ones. Uh, it is an Aquantia chipset and I tried it out and it seems to work fine. So just go with this. You can spend more on a motherboard and get it internal, but I just found that it just wasn't worth it. If the prices are good on the on ones with it internal, you might as well, but motherboards that come with 10 gigabit are usually like loaded with RGB and stuff you don't need for a, what is essentially a server. So whatever, don't care. As for a cooler, trying out the NHC 14S from Noctua, which is probably the biggest cooler you can realistically put into a 4U case. And I've never actually tried this one, and I love Noctua coolers. I've never really had any problems with any of them. But for some reason, this particular one came with a stick of thermal paste that was hardened. <laughs> I've never had that happen. I mean, I literally have dozens and dozens of Noctua fans and like probably a half dozen Noctua coolers. And I have and I buy tubes of, of thermal paste from them. And I've never had a defective tube of thermal paste. But yeah, I like couldn't even squeeze it out. It was just like completely gunked up. I don't know. Weird. But whatever. I had spare thermal paste. So it's not the end of the world. As for power supplies, I've been using these Fractal Design Ion platinum versions uh lately i've bought a few of them and uh yeah they're really good i i really like them the, the cables are really nice they're like a almost like a silicone uh well i think they are silicone cables and uh really easy to run unfortunately they top out at 860 watt i'd like to see a thousand watt one for for like bigger systems but right now they make a few different models i have mostly these 860ps there's an ion 2 i don't have any and right now they're super expensive they're like brand new and i guess they're just having supply issues getting them made so they're they're like totally overkill right or uh, overpriced right now so yeah fully modular the cables on the ion 1 and the ion 2 are interchangeable so that's one thing I really hate about power supplies is that all these companies make their own proprietary cables and you can't, <laughs> you can't just swap cables between them. So yeah, uh, I hope Fractal sticks with it and keeps them all the same design for all of them going forward. I, I, I think some of their older power supplies may have different uh, cables, but uh, all these uh, ion ones are all interchangeable. So I really hope they keep that. So on the front of this rack mount case, it has a little filtered wall or door with a key that's completely pointless. Uh, by the way, the keys are interchangeable between models, which is a nice touch. So this isn't how it comes stock. This particular model comes with two bays that hold four hard drives each. And this is taken up by three uh, just blank panels. Mine came with all these like bashed in and they're kind of a pain in the ass to kind of align and everything. So I just ripped them out and put in another drive cage. This also lets me put in a third fan to kind of maintain 
even pressure through the case so if you're missing a fan here you could potentially have air just circulating it just doesn't push through the rest of the case and just comes back out here so i just replaced it with another drive cage so i i don't have any drives in any of these and i won't because my my storage is all on the nas i just wanted to have these really nice 120 millimeter front bays now and uh, oddly enough the 4500u comes with drive bay things that are five drives and not four this one only holds four per unit and uh yeah one of these is five so it's a little weird that they use different ones although the f the ones that hold four are toolless so i guess yeah you can trade putting two screws in per drive for losing a whole drive per stack uh you got front ports usb3 i think there's a 40 or a, a rsv 4000 without the u and that one just has usb2 i think that's the difference between the two now another way you can save money is that this ships with a whole bunch of these type of fans that are just molex full power cheap fans comes with two 120 millimeter ones and two of these 80s that you'll see in the back if you want to save money by all means use those it'll make a little bit more noise and move a little bit less air than a noctua but you're also saving a lot on on fans because especially with noctua fans i mean they're like 20 bucks a piece so they they add up in price real quick with the front you can just close it up and you have a nice little air filter uh this is all gonna be controlled by the motherboard and the fans are gonna be running pretty slow so it shouldn't make much noise at all when it's running so i've got it partially built i haven't put any of the cables in or hooked up the fans or anything but i have the motherboard installed uh this beam is for like support for long graphics cards but I've never actually used it other than when I used one of these cases as a mining rig. So yeah, I don't really see the point in them. I usually unscrew it while I'm working on it. Like I, I had to take it out to put this in, but uh, it does make a good handle when you're moving this thing around. So I do usually keep it installed. It comes with two 80 millimeter fans at the back. I had one spare old Noctua, so I just plugged that in here. And yeah, you can put in a second one if you need it. This one at all, but I had it. So, you know, it'll just help, help the air flow through it. Another thing that i really like about these rosewell cases is that they use atx power supplies that's a big thing with server cases if you're buying super micro ones and stuff like that they they generally come with redundant power supplies but they're also proprietary and often really loud for a home setting you know you trade off like do you really need a hundred percent reliability in a homeplex server no it doesn't matter if the power supply craps out on this you know it can have downtime it's not the end of the world it's not mission critical so i would rather have a standard power supply that's quiet over having something that uh is yeah sure it's server reliable and everything but yeah you don't need that the 860 watt power supply is super duper overkill like i mentioned i did some kind of basic testing while running mem test which is pretty multi-threaded like it'll it'll really crank up the, the wattage it was only pulling like 120 watts and then idle i think it went down to like 50 and that that's not even in windows so windows will probably get it even lower as for storage i have a one terabyte Saverin pci gen 4 uh, ssd that is going to be just like a cache for transcoding this one's already pretty worn out so i don't care if it you know eventually dies from being written to all the time it's i think it's already down to like 60 percent durability and it, you know so whatever there is another ssd that i'm going to put in here as a the windows drive it's currently in my virtual machine server so i have to get the windows data off it and then erase it back into like a regular drive and then clone the data back on right now it's an esxi virtual disk so i need to get it back onto a regular system but yeah, as you can see with the cooler here, uh, it barely has enough space. The, like I said, this is pretty much the most powerful cooler you can get uh, in a 4U case that isn't like a jet engine. You do have to put the fan on underneath it, so you can, you can mount a fan on top to get better cooling and you can also mount two fans actually it comes with mounts for both you can you can move it underneath it where you're, you're kind of limited to like stock sized ram but you you gain uh some space at the top so it's it's pretty good and uh yeah it's the first time using it i, I really liked it uh noctua by far has the best installing uh system the secure firm stuff is great installing <laughs> installing the brackets and everything are really good and if you have an old one all you do is send them your receipt and they'll give you the uh, lga 1700 mounting adapter for free 
So you can just go to their website and just tell them, hey, I bought a new motherboard with a new mount. And uh, if your cooler supports the new one, they'll just send you it for free. So I, I did that with another one for the, the 12400K. From this angle, you can see all of the drive cages are empty and it's just like a big wind tunnel. But like I said, I'll be running these at a relatively low speed. It should be pretty good on this. It does have uh, support for larger motherboards if you need uh, you know, an EATX e or something. This standard ATX board is fine. Oddly enough, I'm not using the main slot. <laughs> so I, I might if I end up having to put the Quadro in it, but right now I just I don't need it. The um, network card is just in the uh, older 4.0 4X slot. I really like these aftermarket heat pipe coolers for uh, SSDs, especially the 4.0 ones that get really hot. They're really cheap. I think they're like 10 bucks or 13 bucks or something. And they, they work so much better than just like the little chunks of metal that they put on your motherboard or or would come stock with them. There's also another model with a fan that I use on some you know, if I have space for it or if I have uh, lower airflow in the case, and those work really well. Obviously, not everyone is going to be using a separate system for storage. I happen to have a NAS, so it's it's stored on TrueNAS. This setup works perfectly with more drives, like or with internal drives. So if you want to take this, add a serial ATA card or even a SAS card, you can get uh, the LSI 9211 8i. You know, they're like 50 bucks or something. Uh, that adds eight drives. You can also get expanders to connect more drives. This will this setup stock holds eight drives, so you can you can really pack in a lot of storage into this as well. Uh, and you you can use the the serial ATA ports as well. The three M.2 drives are really useful too so you can have caching or, or raid boot drives that kind of stuff so yeah you can definitely save money on this thing by getting a, a lower spec processor using ddr4 uh, will save money too because ddr4 is definitely a lot cheaper than five right now but yeah like the motherboard's cheap power supply is you know mid-range-ish and uh, the case is cheap and like i said you can save money on the fans by just keeping the stock fans you can get a cheaper cooler although i mean the noctuas are so good it's kind of hard to want to lower the quality of the cooler i mean like if you're using uh like an i3 or something or, or an i5 just use the stock cooler i mean it doesn't matter transcoding is intense but i mean unless you're like maxing it out 24 7 um it's really a, a noise benefit by getting a nicer cooler like this and uh yeah that's what i want really i want lower noise i mean you can you can definitely mix and match parts with this and make it a really really nice relatively compact for use uh plex server you can you can go older generation too like right now like the 10 and 11th gen are, are lower in price but um i really I've been liking the 12th gen with the other system I built. So I just thought I'd, I'd try out this like more efficient and, and better system. The reason why the P2000 is so commonly used for Plex, it's a quadro card from NVIDIA, is that it supports a lot of transcodes and it's, it's essentially a 1060. So it's, it's pretty low power and consumer NVIDIA cards are limited to two transcodes, whereas the quadro cards are unlimited so you know it's not uncommon to see people pulling 20 30 transcodes simultaneously in 1080p with one of the, one of the p2000s i'll see how this compares i mean i'm not going to do any like proper benchmarks or anything because it should be a lot better just from the cpu bottleneck standpoint and you know worst case i'll throw the p2000 in and and uh get lots of performance so i'm just going to finish building this and i you know we'll just take a quick look once it's all together okay so i'm pretty much done i've run all the front panel stuff and you'll see that i've run it down the little supports for the drive cages to just keep these as open as possible it's not so much to do with airflow in this case because it doesn't have high airflow because the fans will be going slowly but it does it does help it for catching cat fur or whatever if the the filter doesn't catch everything so it's you know just good practice to keep stuff out of the way of the air path and uh, yeah, nice little 90 degree uh, 3.0 header here worked re really well there is a, a straight one here also USB-C and stuff but that's not getting used here and uh, yeah so I was able to keep everything nice and low the ATX uh, cables like the power supply cables is just uh, CPU and the ATX power so really straightforward obviously uh, if you had a GPU you'd need GPU power uh, and drive cables if you need uh, hard drives but in this setup just the 
of CPU in the motherboard. So really, really clean, easy setup. Uh, I'm just going to probably spend the day trying to get the damn files off my uh, ESXi system and getting that Windows install copied over. I could reinstall Windows, but you know, I'd like to just keep the whole install as is and just move it over. But I don't know how feasible that's going to be. I realized that um, I don't think I mentioned how big the RAM is. <laughs> I have uh, two 16 gig sticks in this, so 32 total. I can add more. This was actually the cheapest memory I could get, the 5200. But if you you know you can get slower memory that will work better in higher capacities. You can also get 32 gig sticks. Right now they are more than double the price. So I mean like I paid 249 or something for the the, the 32 gigs, but to get double that in 32 gig sticks is 560 or something so it's really 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 expensive right now uh, it'll come down in price once it becomes mass produced right now it's still kind of bleeding edge and expensive